Welcome back to another edition of Inside Chesterfield. Whether it's for work, play, entertainment, or dining, Chesterfield is a great West St. Louis County destination. Many independent restaurant owners call Chesterfield home. One of my favorites is John Fabio's. John Fabio's features a welcoming environment and great food at moderate prices. John Fabio's is a family business with three generations having a hand in creating its ongoing success. I hope you enjoy this short video and the food. Abondanza. Matt Terzo, thank you very much for joining us here today. Tell us about John Fabio's Italian Cafe in Chesterfield. Well, John Fabio's uh, has been here since 1987. Uh, we're a family-owned and operated restaurant. We have three generations of, of the family working here at the restaurant on a daily basis. That's awesome. Has the restaurant always been located here at the Hilltown Village Shopping Center at the intersection of Olive and Chesterfield Parkway North? No, originally we started uh, in 1973. Dad started the restaurant uh, at 270 in Olive called Sorrows and then San uh, Santino's, then Sorrows. And uh, in 1987, we moved to Chesterfield because they were gonna tear down the building. Oh, wow. I had no idea about that. So, dad started the business and mom, I'm assuming. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you and your brother, Johnny, got involved with it. But we you, did. you told me a pretty neat story about the name of, the, of, of John Fabio's today as what is known today. Help us understand where the name came from. Yeah, well, we, uh, we started in, uh, when we were about 10, 11 years old helping out at the restaurant. And then when it came time to name the restaurant, we wanted something different. Sitting at the dinner table, we were throwing names out. And I blurted out John Fabio's, which is short for my brother's name. His first name's Johnny, middle name Fabio. Meshed it together, and there we have it, the name John Fabio's. Wow, so was the idea always that the kids would get involved in the business and ultimately run the business? Starting at 10 or 11, we got a little taste of it, and uh, moving forward, we decided that it's something that we wanted to do, and it's in our blood. And that was your decision, not <laughs> not something that was handed down to Actually, you? Dad tried to talk us out of it, so. <laughs> really? Yeah, he says it's hard work, and he's not lying, it is hard work. <laughs> wow, you know, there's a saying that goes, the uh, the older I get, the, my, the smarter my parents become. That's the and, truth, and <laughs> really, whether we want to admit it or not. <laughs> it really is the case. Well, you guys have done a wonderful job with it now, and you know, it's, I see you out there all the time. Johnny, not as much, and, and mom and dad seem to be in, in the kitchen and I assume happy with that. Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Now, a lot of these recipes that you're using, were these passed down from, from uh, generation to generation? Yeah, my dad started at an early age, so over the years he's uh, adapted a lot of recipes and taken some from, you know, the family and grandma and grandpa as well. That's great. Now, I have my favorite menu items. Um, you know, those include the house salad, the lasagna, the brick oven pizza. Uh, my wife's a big fan of the tutamare. You had mentioned it earlier, but I mean, everything tastes so great. Uh, what's the secret to that? Well, uh, like you said, uh, I'm out front here and my dad and my brother are in the kitchen and my mom's making that house salad. So uh, dad makes the lasagna from scratch, uh, makes the noodles from scratch and everything's made to order when you order it. Yeah, I mean, I've eaten a lot of lasagna in my days, but it has to be the best. I mean, it melts in your mouth. It does melt in your and mouth. And you know me, I try to do the gluten-free thing, but I cannot <laughs> do that. And I can't pass up the lasagna. And it used to be a little bit more rare. Now it seems like it's more of a common item on the menu. It's become, uh, even though it's not on the menu, it's become a, a daily special or a permanent special. Yeah. All right, but if everybody comes in and orders it, there may not be a piece left for me, so I would appreciate you just kind of... Save, save one for you? I'll call you before we there come you in go. just to make sure. You know, one of the things that uh, small businesses are always concerned about is employee retention. And one of the things I love about coming in here is that, you know, we know all the wait staff. And uh, what's maybe a little hint or a um, suggestion that you might make to other small business owners in regard to employee retention? And why is it that you've been so successful over the years to keep the same wait Well, staff? like you said, most of our uh, staff has been with us a long time. Um, being a family restaurant, we try to treat... Uh, the staff and uh, the employees like uh, an extension of our family and uh, I think they enjoy working with us and uh, we enjoy having them. And there's no question about it. You can see it. I mean, everyone's really joyful and great personalities. And it's rare that you find uh, someone who's not smiling and, and very, very helpful and personable. So I think that's that's great. Right now, we're in December, early December, and it's hard to believe it's almost 60 degrees outside. So we're taking advantage of the weather, but we're also dealing with COVID and the pandemic in general. And right now there's no indoor dining. So you're focused in other areas. Why don't you help us understand how you have adapted? Well, when we do have indoor dining, we are uh, socially distanced inside. The 
tables are spaced out. We took out 17 tables to make that happen. But since that's not allowed right now, um, we are doing curbside carry out and starting online ordering as well as delivery. Uh, we had a little taste of it back in March on how to do it and kind of perfect, perfected it now. And uh, you just go to the website at johnfabio.com and uh, it'll pretty much guide you through all the steps. That's great. Now, in regard to the delivery itself, are you going to have your own folks deliver? Or are you going to use an outside service? We're going to use a third party service. So, yeah, the drivers from that third party service get the tips. Our staff doesn't. But uh, it's one of those things as it gets colder outside, we understand people you know, might not want to come out and do the curbside thing. So it's one of those, uh, you know, necessary things we feel like we need to, to do to make it more convenient for everyone. That's great. We appreciate that and making it convenient for people to, uh, to enjoy your food is some, something that is, is brilliant and, and necessary. So we all appreciate that as well. Uh, I was on the website today and I noticed you have a limited promotion going on and I wanted to make sure that you shared that with everybody so that they can take advantage of that. Well, tell us about that. We do. Um, from now through the holidays, uh, we're doing, uh, for every $100 in gift certificates you buy, you get a $15 bonus certificate. You're welcome to use it as a stocking stuffer or keep it for yourself. Oh, that's awesome. And I can bring that in any time, any restrictions to using it? The bonus gift certificate is good for the first six months of next year, but we can extend that oh, depending on what the pandemic decides to do. Thank you so much, Matt, for being here and, and sharing with us. And, uh, and honestly, being our first, uh, our first uh, video podcast of independent uh, business owners here in Chesterfield, trying to help as much as we can to promote your business and to really share what you do and what other folks are doing in the area. So thanks for doing that. Our pleasure. And we appreciate you taking the time out to do it. Our pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, please come back and check out the next couple of videos that we're going to be doing over the next couple of days. Thank you much.